Hey everyone, we're Tillway Couple. I'm Tom, the driver. And I'm Bunny, and I ask a lot of questions. You do ask a lot of questions. And of course, don't forget Bama. Bama! Oh yeah, Bama's in the picture. Bama's our new baby. Yeah. Boop. <laughs> she boops back. She does boop back. So anyway, we were asked if we'd do a video on... Some of the questions that you should ask your recruiters before you start with the company. Exactly. So first things first, on our website, which is right down here, towawaycouple.com, we go to resources. We have a list of companies that, it's not all the companies, but it's companies we've talked to drivers along the way, and they were happy with their company. Obviously, there's some that are not happy, but when we get good responses, we post them on there. Mm -hmm. Definitely check out our video on Starfleet. And mention Tom and Bunny if you're going to go to Starfleet. And why you ask? Because you watch our videos and we don't charge anything. And it helps us out too. It does help. Every little bit helps. Yeah. we got to pay for all this alcohol somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, the questions that you should ask, obviously, ones, if you have any questions... No, no question is a stupid question. No, not, not, no. Well, some people would say they are. We, we actually have a Facebook group because people would ask questions in the RV transport type groups. They got so many rude people that we created our own group called RV transport for new people. And we don't tolerate rude responses. And if they can't give you a quality response that'll help you with your success, we don't feel they should be part of our group, and we do delete people daily from the group. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, definitely uh, ask in, in as many questions as you need to ask, so that way you have a good understanding of what you're getting into. Exactly, and if you're a transporter and you can offer people, what we say, gear people for success, join our group and help people learn this industry because it is a learn-as-you-go industry, and that's why we are going to do this video here. Yes. So one of the things you definitely want to ask is, um, not all companies do, but some have orientation fees. Some will have like um, legal fees. Mm -hmm. And some companies actually have orientation fees. The first company we ran for, we spent like $225 each for orientation. That covers the drug test and some of the other stuff that they do, but they, not every company does. No. So check with the orientation fees because they can be pretty pricey and you gotta pay them before you start. Uh, the last two companies, they have an annual contract or legal fee and one was $75 a year and one is $65 a year. Right. So again, each one has their own fees. And a lot of times they'll work with you, the other companies on the contract fee. The first company, we, we did our first run and then the, the second run they did the contract fee. I called them up and I said, hey, what's this contract fee? And they're like, well, we charge a legal fee every year and Basically, we and I said, well, how come you're taking it out of the second run, not the first? And they're like, well, we want you to make some money because they know coming into Indiana, you're coming in a lot of times, a lot of times broke. Mm -hmm. So they just didn't want to gouge us. So that was pretty cool. And a lot of the companies want you to take a short run first. That way you feel comfortable. They can check your logging, make sure that everything's right and you're doing everything right. So therefore, you're... Your short runs are not going to pay very much. Money, I think so. it's to see if you damage a trailer. To <laughs> yeah, be honest. you damage a trailer. I don't think you're going to be pulling for them any longer. I think it's your first and only time. Yes. A uh, very important question uh, that I think that would be is how much are they paying per mile? Uh, yeah. Are we going in order? We wrote this down. <laughs> <laughs> so how much do they pay per mile? That is very, very an, an important question. And don't just... Don't let them just ramble off, well, we pay up to 226 a mile. No, 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 no. Be very specific. Ask them, if I run East Coast, if I run to West Coast, mm -hmm. when I mean coast, I mean bordering oceans. Yes, 
Coast to coast. Um, if they run local runs, if they run south, south would be Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, Arizona, and anything south of Indiana. And then sometimes north of Indiana. Mm -hmm. So ask them specifically, just, okay, so are typically you see a higher pay going east coast. The second higher is usually west coast, Oregon, Washington, California. Third then would be all your in-between states. Mm -hmm. Now with some companies, even going further east is going to get paid even more too. Exactly. So if you go northeast, way up mm -hmm. there, it pays more. And typically, we'll get to this, they'll pay your tolls coming yes. back. And Canada pays higher. And Canada pays higher. So if you're looking to do Florida runs, ask them specifically. And if you're CDL or non-CDL, there are two different rates. Ask them if you're CDL, what does a CDL load pay? But also ask them what a non-CDL load pays because as a CDL driver, you might be stuck in a non-CDL trailer because that's all they have going that direction. Mm -hmm. So you got to be prepared for that. Exactly, exactly. But uh, that just went right into that one. So definitely if you're going to, we'd want to ask if you if they're hiring CDL or non and non-CDL at the same time. It depends because a lot of times like, uh, currently, we're running for Starfleet, and Starfleet pays the same exact no matter where you go in the country. Mm -hmm. So that makes it really easy to just grab a trailer and go. Where before, we were being very specific to try to locate trailers either going all the way to California, not Arizona, California. Five, five hours further paid $1,000 more. So, yeah, we, we looked at that in our logistics, but we did a lot of East Coast runs because they paid the highest and on their rate sheet. Now that we're over here where we're at, it doesn't matter if we could do a short run, long run, it all pays the same. Yep. Yep. Okay, what's the next so, one? So, um, uh, we you... talked about CDL, non CDL. Yep. Um, how are you paid? That's one of the biggest questions we get asked all the time is, how do you get paid? Do you, and we just did a video on that one. We did. We did. So you can go back and watch that video. Or watch this, it in the future. I don't know what one we're going to release first. Right. Exactly. But typically, typically, companies pay 50% up front. And then when you drop the trailer and you do... Um, do your paperwork and submit it, then they pay the other 50%. Some companies will pay um, up to $1,000 on the initial and then the full balance on drop-off. But if you need extra money for fuel, you can call them and they can put more money on your books. But they're not going to put the whole amount on your books so you drop. Um, and then some companies, I don't know how they do it, but I've heard they pay every two weeks mm -hmm. on check. So they send it. They either do direct deposit or send a check to your house. Um, we do hear some drivers that are like that. I don't know if I'd recommend those companies only because okay. two weeks is a long time. That that's, is. That's those 10, are, 000 you miles. You know, and those could be your small companies that are starting out. So they're waiting to get paid from the companies too before they can pay out everything. Which, yeah. It's risky. It is very risky for, for everybody involved. Right. Um, the other big one would be, does that company offer diesel discounts and yeah. how much? Not, I, not all companies offer diesel right. discounts. And they can't really, most of the time they can't really give you how much your discount's going to be, but they can let you know, oh yeah, we're a bigger company, so our discounts are bigger than so and so, you know, than right. somebody else. Or they'll just tell you, um, like when we first signed on to the first company, they put that the... Average was fifty two. Average was fifty two cents a gallon for diesel discounts. I thought, holy cow, that's great. But we were averaging a dollar six a gallon because we were able to plan our fuel stops. But they just said fifty six cents a gallon on average. But yeah, so you can't really just ask if they have diesel discounts. We just talked to a couple. They don't get diesel discounts. They're using an app called Mudflap. 
we suggest you use a mud flap. Even with the company's diesel discounts, you still want to check the gas buddy, the mud flap, as well as your company's diesel discounts. We do find that um, discounts can be more just going to Sam's Club. Mm -hmm. So it, it really depends on, like running right now, with fuel prices being outrageous, <clears throat> it's just a matter of where they're going to go. But definitely... Um, Diesel discounts is a big question. Right. Um, we're probably going to do this one in two videos. Okay. Because uh, our clock is not working. Yes. <laughs> all right. Keep going. And we have a long list. Keep going. Um, no, we'll just do it all in this video. Okay. With that one, a lot of people want to know the biggest thing is, especially if you have an older truck, what's the max age that that company will take a truck? And currently, the companies we've been dealing with is... 10 years. 10 years. So 2012 or newer, mm -hmm. and some are even saying 2014 or newer. But also, you got to remember, too, um, fuel prices are higher. Um, right now, we are in the, the shutdown stage for uh, New Year rollouts. So, therefore, the whole month of July, everything is very, very slow. Most companies are going to be very strict. Are very strict. Might even be a newer truck just because of the fact that now they can afford to be picky on their... It is a seller's market. Yes. And they're the seller and you're the buyer. Yep. So. so With that said, though, we get a lot of feedback going, well, my truck's immaculate shape. It has 18,000 miles, but it's a 2008. We're not saying you won't get hired on. We're saying these companies don't look at your mileage. They don't look at your truck. They do some want pictures. But the fact is, is... Canada requires commercial vehicles 10 years or newer. So I think they just go with that. Even though you would probably never ever go into Canada, I think they want the potential and the options for every one of their fleet trucks to go into Canada. Yeah. And you leasing on your truck is one of their fleet trucks. So, but there are companies that will hire as upon Older trucks. And uh, upon inspection, because trust me, out here you see every different type of truck. And some trucks don't even look like they could still be on the road. Exactly, and they're <laughs> even newer. Yeah. And they're all beat to hell. Yep. Um, now, um, we, we kind of we kind of covered plate fees and orientation. Uh, so we went over plate fees. Well, we didn't really go over plate fees. Um, okay. Because the plate fees, there's more to the plate fees than just um, on the orientation. We didn't talk about plates. Yeah, we did. It was an orientation. A lot of times that no, they're... No, but we did another video on that. This one here, we didn't talk about it. We didn't? No. <laughs> so, you got to ask, are there plate fees? Now, we did a video just recently. I don't know if it's live yet or not. We never know what order we're going to put these out in and we do about 10 videos at a time. Mm -hmm. That's why we're wearing the same clothes. It's not that we can't afford them. It's just that it, we're we too back lazy. To back. So you got to ask about plate fees because we're seeing a new trend and we don't like it and we don't think that they should be doing it. And we're starting to see some companies jumping on the bandwagon and they're charging the drivers a monthly ten dollar a month or whatever plate fee we've been doing this over two two years we know people have been doing it for 10 years nobody's ever been charged a monthly pay, plate fee and now some of these companies are starting to gouge the drivers with these fictitious plate fees mm -hmm. so if you if they're charging you ten dollars a month and the companies charge sixty dollars a year for the plates that means they're making money off of you the driver on the back end yeah so we don't know why they're charging them um maybe you but look at that companies that don't charge plate fees first any company that charges you the driver for any additional stuff that might be your only option to get into this business mm -hmm. because they might be the only ones willing to hire you because of the age of your truck or that your lack of experience or your your age or any number of things yeah you might have to come in and just bite the bullet till you get enough experience to jump to a Nether company. Yes. I'm not saying they're irreputable. I'm just saying that you want to make sure that you're driving for a company 
that looks out for you, the driver, as much as you're going to look out for them and their um, product that they're delivering. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're not big fans on the plate fee thing. <laughs> no. Um, the other one is going to be very important because they're all different on how much you're, you're going to definitely want to find out how much uh, insurance you're you need to cover on your unladen insurance. Yes. So um, most of them are either 500000 or a million. Right. And a lot of them are going to go a million. So in unladen insurance, uh, it's a whole different animal. We're not going to talk about what unladen insurance is in this video. We can go on for 30 minutes talking about unladen insurance. But you can ask the insurance company what unladen is as well as your compliance. You can go to our towawaycouple.com, click on resources. We do have insurance company phone numbers in our list down there somewhere. Call them and ask them about commercial and unladen insurance and how much it would be for your commercial and 500000 and your commercial and a million dollars because it might be about 10 or 15 dollars more a month mm -hmm. yep so and like i said each company is completely different you scratch so, that off? yes um <laughs> so the, the other one is going to be more like when you're talking yards so basically yard fees. yard fees the dreaded yard fees okay so a lot of people um don't really like the yard fees. We're, we're, we don't like them either. Trust us, that's just money out of our pocket. So the way the yard fees work is the companies hire drivers to go to the manufacturer, bring the trailer, and they're supposed to be staged in a way with all the paperwork where you can connect and go. Because in the past, we heard that some people were having to go to the manufacturer, find their trailer, and mm -hmm get the paperwork all done, it was taking hours. And typical yard fees can range anywhere from $20 to $50 on, uh, and in between. So when we were doing shuttles, we were getting paid $47 to pull from Jayco Manufacturer to our yard uh, in South Elkhart. Yep. Now, how much did the driver get charged? Forty-seven dollars. So basically, the driver paid our fee to get the trailer there, and then the company paid somebody else to do all the paperwork and put it on the load board and get it ready for dispatch. There's all kinds of behind-the-scenes <laughs> stuff. Well, and some some companies have security that work at the yards. Some some right. have their dispatchers go over and take care of take care of everything in their yards some yards are set up nicer than the others so all of that fee goes into it um in well and it's kind of like people will say well they should be responsible for part of the yard fee the company they are they're paying for the security or the camera equipment or the maintenance of the yard and the, everything else to get you to that mm -hmm. trailer so mm -hmm. uh we're not defending or do, saying anything we're just saying that it is what it is it's something that you will have to pay um, no way around it. no way around it so find out what the yard fees are uh, one company they have different yard fees for each yard because they pay where it came from the manufacturer and how far it went to the yard the Starfleet is just 27 bucks because the manufacturers are usually within a mile or two of the yard so it's pretty quick right and also with that one too is um, you want to find out how many yards they have and in what states yes so like some company like where we're at now uh, or where I'm at Starfleet I'm assigned a yard mm -hmm. so that makes it nice it's in our video Starfleet that's the yard I'm assigned out of it's wide it's easy everything we do have other yards that other drivers are assigned to I could be loaned out to another yard if there's nothing going the direction I want to go or they don't have enough trailers for the amount of drivers. They might say we have a trailer at this yard and then I would go to that yard and pick it up just like any other mm -hmm. company. But 99% of the time I'm going to pull out of one yard. 
Another company has 13 yards just here in Indiana. And then they have several in Idaho and some have them in Oregon. So you're going to want to find out. Right, because a lot of your companies do have yards in Idaho, Oregon, some in California. So that's definitely something that you can ask a question, but also more importantly, ask, do they get paid the same rate? Yes. So you want to make sure on the pull-in fee, they call them pull-in fees because you're, you're paying a driver to pull the trailer into that yard. So you want to find out how much of the pull-in fees are at the other yards. Like if you're going to go to Idaho to drop a trailer, then you're going to pick one up from Idaho to go to California. What's Okay, so coming from Indiana typically pays a higher rate per mile going to Indiana or Idaho. But going from Idaho to California might be 20 cents a mile less, mm -hmm. but it might be the same. So you got to find out from the company, hey, if I go here and I pick up out of this yard, what is the pull-in fee out of, what? where are your yards and what are the different pull-in fees for each yard? Get them to specify each yard because one yard might be $38, another yard might be $48. Mm -hmm. And it all depends. I mean, obviously there's a some companies are different um, for drive-away drivers versus tow-away drivers. Exactly. So, so they might be completely different. Right. Um, also, too, one would be like if if I'm doing a short run, are my wave, my yard fees waived? Uh huh. So definitely on that one. So like most of the a lot of the companies are anything of under 150 miles. You're or 300 miles, they your waived, yard uh, fees are waived. Yeah, one company, our company, waives it under 200 miles. Our last company waived it under 300 miles. But we're also talking $27 versus $48. Right. So that's a big, big difference. I can handle paying $27 for a 300-mile run. And again, another thing, this isn't to really look at uh, our talk to the recruiter about, but... If they say we waive the yard fee under 300 miles, when you're dispatching a trailer, this is just from experience, be very careful to watch because if your dispatch is 301 miles, that goes against your whole cost per mile, your fuel. I mean, you're talking if they listed it at 299, you would be making $48 more. But. If, if they list it at 301, you're going to give them $48, $48 out of your total. Mm -hmm. So you got to look at all that. So when we were looking at $48 for under 300 miles, our minimum was five to 600 miles minimum are 299 or less. We didn't touch anything from 300 to 500 just because it just blew our cost per mile down. Yep. All right, so that's of, just a little, that works little extra experience. Um, two of the other big questions, too, is because some of the smaller companies don't, uh, you want to verify if they're going to reimburse your permits. Yes, yeah, some or, companies don't re reimburse permits, and they take it right out of your money. Yeah, some of them pay for them right up front. You don't have to do anything. Of course, you have to go through to show them that you do have the permit. Right. Um, and that can be in your packet. That could be in any other way, but... Some, like I said, some small companies don't reimburse. Some only do half. So definitely ask that question. I'm going to follow up one thing with the insurance because we didn't know this. All, all the bigger companies pay for the cargo insurance. The unladen has nothing to do with the cargo insurance. Then cargo insurance is only limited liability, meaning it doesn't protect you or your equipment. That's why you have to have commercial insurance. And don't mistake personal insurance with their cargo insurance yes. and the unladen insurance. Because the second the personal insurance finds out that you're driving commercially and you didn't have a commercial policy, they could deny you. And that means you, it opens you up for lawsuits and all kinds of issues. Um, but we did talk to one couple. Their company charges them like 120 a week. 150 150 a week for cargo insurance. So they don't even pay the cargo insurance where all of our companies have paid the cargo insurance. So, and then they still have to have commercial insurance and unladen insurance. So yeah, and... 
and they're pay, they're getting paid the co same cost per mile as everybody else. So they're they're definitely looking at other companies right now. Yeah. Yeah. So and I don't blame them. No, not at all. And a lot of times as people like they're like I found a company that operates in my state and they run RVs. Well, those are the ones that you definitely really have to question on those on that particular question. Exactly. You want to make sure of what what's going to come out of your pocket. The only thing that should ever come out of your pocket besides um, contract fee, a year annual contract fee, and a pull-in fee would be your maintenance, your uh, your fuel. But the company should have the cargo insurance. Oh, and the unlaid and commercial insurance. But the company should have the cargo insurance and the... Uh, um, pay the permits, tolls, and have all your paperwork ready and you don't have to do nothing. Right. Now, there are some companies, um, Horizon in particular, they give you a, uh, what's it called? Not trip ticket, but... A PC miler? A PC miler. That's a so direction. It's a directions. Like so, a map quest, a turn for turn. And they're obviously going to avoid the tolls that they can. Right. Where if so they will pay those tolls that are on that PC miler. Right. But if you go off course and you want to take um, the toll roads all the way, they're not going to reimburse that. Correct. So you definitely have to ask which companies are going to pay tolls going or some of them are going to be coming back because they're all completely different on who's paying tolls and if they're paying or not. Now, I will add one thing to that. Um, you will always lose on the cost per mile because the companies, while they can do a map quest from address to address, they all do it. They pay zip code to zip code for the nearest point. So let's just say you're picking up here and you're delivering here, you're going to get paid from the beginning of the zip code to the beginning of the zip code where it starts. So on average, I typically drive about 20 miles further um, per load. We are going to look at uh, our accountant and see if we could show that in a map quest that we're driving 20 miles and we're getting paid to 16 a mile. Do we can we write off two sixteen a mile for that twenty miles or forty miles because it would be a round trip, mm -hmm. and then do our accounting elsewhere? So we're we're still trying to figure out that on our taxes, but that is exactly how you get paid by all these companies. Yep, and they then, don't you don't get paid by your odometer. No, I wish. I wish. But then the other the last one uh, that a lot of people is dispatch. How are you dispatched? Yes. Some are self-dispatching. Only one self-dispatch that I know of. <laughs> right. So, and even that, we're, there's things with the self-dispatch that might not allow you to self-dispatch at that time. But right. some, some dispatch off of a load board, you can look at what's on the load board and then call your dispatcher and say, I want that load. Some send out a spreadsheet. Well, and to go on that, so like um, Indiana Transport, a lot of people like working for Indiana Transport because they can see the load board, they can click request load, and immediately they know if they got the load. Now, if it's after hours, they'll have to wait till the next business day to get their advance on it and their full dispatch and everything. So if they do it Friday night at 8 o'clock, they're not going to be able to pick up the trailer till Monday. But other places... Uh, Horizon, they actually have a app with a load board, but you can email the dispatcher or even call the dispatcher and they'll have other stuff that's not on the load board. Basically, I think that's because they need to get those loads moved mm -hmm. before the other ones. But if you really need to go a certain direction, they can work with you. The Starfleet where we work, they send out every Thursday for sure, but pretty much every day we get a spreadsheet every day of all the trailers in our yard not all the other yards but just specifically our yard and every day it shrinks and grows and um but every thursday is when it gets really master updated but you can call them and if they know something's coming in they could probably work with you but they really don't know what's coming in until that 
pulling driver delivers that trailer to the yard. And most of most of the companies, and which would be another question to ask, most of the companies require you to pick up that trailer within 24 hours of you requesting the load. Yeah, so a lot of times we would request the load on, let's just, you're, you have to, Indiana was 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So if you requested the load, you have to pick it up by 10 o'clock at night. I think it was only because they wanted, when they went and did the inventory every single day at eight o'clock in the morning, they wanted that trailer gone. So we would dispatch late Thursday, knowing we weren't gonna pick it up until Saturday or Sunday, because it was either a two day delivery or a three and a half day delivery, where we wanted to deliver Monday morning. So we would gauge all that. So by Dispatching on Thursday, we can figure our delivery time and we wouldn't go into their inventory time. Mm -hmm. But every company is completely different. You can also ask about um, how often they do inventory because depending if they do an inventory, that could shut down every one of their yards for a day to two days. And we've had that where we couldn't even dispatch or pick up because they were doing um they're doing inventory on the yards of right what they have in there yes um a lot of your bigger companies do inventory they have people that only work in inventory and that's their job so they're in there doing inventory early in the mornings to make right. sure that those trailers went out and if people will dispatch and didn't take them out they'll get undispatched yes and then put the trailer go back up on the load board for mm -hmm. somebody else to dispatch yep so those are just some of the questions. If you're watching this and you're a transporter, or even if you called and asked your own questions, feel free to drop comments with questions that you think that people can ask. Um, just because we, we did a Facebook post and these are a lot of the questions that people, that they put up, as well as some of our own. And definitely check out our group Facebook group, RV Transport for New People. Mm -hmm. We uh, definitely have a lot of people in there that are experienced, can a help answer questions, and uh, we try not to let any bad advice go through or rude people. We will delete that account. Exactly. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter. We're just tow away couple, just as you see it at the bottom without the dot com. <laughs> anyway, um, we love your questions and a lot of your questions we actually produce videos on mm -hmm. so we actually use you to help feed our content exactly <laughs> so until next time we'll see you down the road we'll see you down the road